Do we have to fucking do this again? <laughs> All right, ready? All right, this is for real this time. January 14th, 2011, a man walks into New York City's Hustler Club and tries to shake them down for protection money. The man walked with a cane, and he was 93 years old. He was Sonny Franzese, underboss of the Colombo family. And that's who we're talking about today on The Sit Down. That's all I ask of you. Need How we doing, folks? Welcome to another exciting episode of The Sit Down, a podcast about organized crime. I'm your host, Mike Racine. With me is my buddy, Frank Terranova. Greetings. And as always, on computers, <laughs> Mr. Matt Anderson. Hey, guys. A guy we could not do the show without. I mean... <laughs> Guy comes in, has the has the gear, has the mics, and uh, just makes everything work. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? Good. How you doing, Frank? What happened this week? Oh. Anything interesting? No, 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 I had a date on Friday. Oh, yeah. Nice. Maybe we'll get in that story a little later. Yeah, it has nothing to do with organized crime. <laughs> hey, thank God. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, what happened? You watched the uh, you watched the Sopranos pilot this yeah, week, right? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I saw the research. Sopranos for the first time. Are you going to sit all the way over there? I just, I just chair's comfortable. Okay. Anyway, uh, I, I it's saw... Michelle Wolf. Not to name drop or anything, but oh. Michelle Wolf gave me that chair. Nice. No, no wonder yeah. it stinks. It looks Shut great. Shut the fuck up, you fucking nothing. Don't disrespect my friends. <laughs> I don't know. Is that real She's leather? great. She's a great comic. I was trying to be funny. I would love a job for her someday. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a nice chair. Um, no, it's not real leather. No, it's not. <laughs> it's too bad. I had her couch in here, too. We had to break the legs off to get it in, and uh, we threw it out because people kept falling over. Podcast it appropriate. Was nice, it was had to nice break couch. the legs. Yeah. Anyway. anyway yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Climb me a Coke. <laughs> we just uh, start kissing. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. Now. Yeah. Um, Can I tell yeah. you something? Yeah. This fucking guy is so fucking great. There should be a movie about him. You think? His life is so fucking interesting. He just got out. He mm -hmm. just got out of jail. 100 years old. Yeah, he got out in February, right? No, February 2017. They released him from prison. Oh, He's going to spend Christmas with his 100 family. Years I think old. that's great. That's oh, nice. God bless him. And also, like we say on the show, he's an old man. <laughs> Stop bothering him. <laughs> right. You know? also, nobody uh, should be, actually, nobody yeah. should be in prison past like 95. No, if you make it to 95, no matter what you did, rule. they let you go. He's you a, might kill somebody else. You might fuck another kid. It doesn't matter. <laughs> You're too old. One. You made it. <laughs> another kid. I'm well, so it's happy probably that, not I'm, a kid I'm, anymore by the I'm time. I'm so happy that he's out. He's also uh, Scott Kahn's uh, godfather. Mm -hmm. Scott Kahn is what? James Kahn's son. Yeah. Okay. He's he's James Khan, uh I think he met Sonny when he was researching the Godfather and they stayed friends and he be, and he was Godfather to uh Scott. Yeah. Sonny, congratulations. We just want to say we're happy for you. We're glad you're out and we wish you the best. Oh, we hope you live a hundred more years. <laughs> yeah. But, but 18, it right? is crazy that he I mean he, he served like forty years movie. in prison, right? Yeah. So this guy should probably there's how did he survive in prison for that long? A lot of these guys they He's connected. They he's pass away. I he's what the he did. underboss. Well, he was in the he was in the federal penitentiary. I, I doubt that he was. I mean, it's he not, wasn't around the. He had his freedom taken yeah. away, but I don't think he was like living such a bad life. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's nobody had to fuck with. No, him, but he you know? was the oldest. I think he was the oldest incarcerated person in the history of the country. Right. Yeah. Well, people usually die young in jail. Jail is not a good life. John Gotti died in, in jail. Yeah. He didn't live. Maybe he would have got out. Yeah. Oh, okay. So June twenty third, twenty seventeen. So that's like oh, a couple months ago. Yeah. I I went online and I followed his son on Twitter. He was like tweeting about Wait, his dad. One? I don't no. follow that. Michael, Michael. Michael, the Sons preacher. Of, I'll tell you one thing. You know who's yeah. not going to be at that Christmas dinner this year? Yeah. Michael. No, it's his son, yeah. the rat. Yeah. I mean, he's not going to be at the Christmas dinner. Michael's the. We'll get into that Michael's later. But I, I actually I like Michael. Why? Michael's an interesting character. He's a fucking stool. Because he was a, he was one of the best earners in the history of the mob. He yeah. made a lot of money. He was he was really smart. And then, and then they he fucked ratted him out over. his father. No, no, no they no, no, didn't. No, no. They You're mixing two people up. No, well, actually, Joe. He, yeah. Because like okay, so like basically John like, Junior. No, but I think Michael Michael yeah. became an informant too. No, he didn't. He uh, he made a deal where he uh, yeah, that's being an informant. He couldn't talk about like the stuff and he never ratted on anybody he just no he went to jail for a little bit oh, and then okay. and then he became a preacher and uh but his father's not talking to so him. michael wasn't informed i thought michael john cooperated. jr ratted on his dad 
and sent him to prison, and he's in the witness protection program right now. All right, now. so let's clear this up for our listeners, yeah. right? John Jr. was the older son. Right. I read a little bit about him. Mm-hmm. He's the one that became an informant. He was the only guy to ever rat on his father. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which, yeah, yeah. Which people, uh, yeah, thought that I was thought it was Mike. weird. I don't know. No, Mike, Michael. But I think Michael did become an informant. No, he uh, he publicly renounced organized crime, so maybe that's where you're that's getting that from. That's what he did wrong. Oh, okay. Because, like, I well, here's my take on it. I feel like he's still into it because, like, during the trial, he's like, oh, my brother's tearing this family apart, you know, ratting on his dad. Mm-hmm. And he's, like, a Christian minister. So, like, I feel like he turned minister slash preacher slash, you know, whatever because he saw the writing on the wall with Rico and he's like, I made my money and now this is how I'm going to continue to make money. You know? Oh, okay. That's, that was my take on it. I was like, oh man, this guy's smart. So wait, are you, yeah, now you're sure Michael was definitely not an informant? Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. correct. Interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but what's funny is like, there's actually a Sopranos episode where Tony takes Meadow to, to college and he sees a guy who was a rat and he calls his associates and he's like, yeah, he's making a living. Like, Doing doing speaking gigs at colleges and stuff like that, but it's like, but you watch the show and you're like, now I think this guy was based on Michael Francis, but you watch the show and you're like, how how right. how is he doing speaking gigs and a bunch of people want him dead? That was a great. They're episode. gonna kill him. That was a good episode. Right. I don't want to give it away for you, but uh, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I know a little bit about it. You can. The the guy, well, the about whole it. theme is like lying. Like Meadow asked Tony, the She's guy like, "Are you who... in the mafia?" And he's like, "No, there's no mafia." <laughs> right. And the whole time, the whole episode, he's supposed to be spending time with his daughter, and he's like running around trying to kill this yeah. rat. The I'm guy, already the sick guy of it, which played, is amazing. Yeah. The guy who played that part is Tony Ray Rossi. He's a hairstylist. Oh, is he? Yeah, on West 57th Street. Oh, nice. Oh. He's <laughs> from New York. Yeah, yeah. Good awesome. for him. Do you ever cut your hair? No, it's expensive. It's like I think it's like fifty bucks. He's like, I was on The Sopranos, <laughs> so uh, it's only five hundred dollars. No, a lot of people. Danny Aiello go. I mean, he's cousins with Danny Aiello, and Danny gets his hair cut there. A lot, a lot of actors. Yeah, he cuts a lot of actors here. It's if you're if you're on Sopranos or something. I I feel like you could just make a living for the rest of your life just doing like speaking engagements and dinners and stuff like that. <laughs> Sopranos like, like, touring. Yeah. Well, there's a guy Robert like Fernaro. There's yeah. a guy Robert Fernaro. Shout out to Robert Fernaro. He played, I, yeah, I he played Eugene. I like great actor, right? Yeah. And uh, he used to be the doorman at Caroline's too. Oh yeah. Yeah, but um, but I feel like that guy's probably just set for life, right? Why? They're like they're like a. Hey, Pasta with Rabu Funaro, the guy from Sopranos who hung himself and peed his pants. Sorry for the spoiler. A lot of these guys. But you're gonna you're gonna have to have some spoilers, Matt, if you're just watching. You gotta you gotta grow up quick on this podcast. A lot of those guys are doing really bad direct to video movies. Oh, they are. Yeah, yeah. Well, Johnny Sack. It's really funny. He's ah, you don't know who fucking Johnny Sack is. Well, the the thing that interests me about the mob is like. There's always this like weird dangling connection where it's like, sure, you can get nabbed by the feds, but you can also get nabbed by Hollywood. You know, like they could come calling for you and be like, we want your story. Yeah. And that happened to a lot of mobsters, right? It's kind of weird. You would think there'd be a rule against that or something, you know? Turning your story into a screenplay. Yeah, like some people can't. Yeah, I'm done. I'm going to download Final Draft and write. (laughs) It's just like that. That seems more more dishonorable than being a rat. Like some people, it's it's illegal to make a profit. Like there's a lot of serial killers. Like it's illegal for them to make a profit of of what they did. But for some reason, I don't know. Serial killers? Yeah, like like there's certain people like who commit violent crimes. And then it, it becomes illegal for them to profit from it oh right so if they're like writing about something super fucked up and they just never proved it for whatever reason if you're a serial killer you can't oh okay that no i guess that makes sense because people some scumbag in hollywood would be like we want you to consult you know what's fucked up is this guy john aliti he ran he was junior's uh, bodyguard uh, junior who god he was junior Gotti's bodyguard he was a wise guy yeah he was an associate he was albanian and uh he ratted, ratted on Junior. Of course, and and he, it got him nowhere. It, it, he, uh, all the stuff that he said, they 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 saw him as a piece of shit, and it, it got got him nowhere. Yeah. Anyway, I I read his book. He's rec- recently he was in Ozone Park. He was going to see the Mets. Uh-huh. I'm like, this guy's just walking around. Like nobody's trying, nobody. He's he's like no, nobody's going after him. What happens? Do they forget about it or something? I or think like- I think I think the mafia has been so decimated that they don't do anything anymore. Like yeah. Sammy the Bull was in Arizona openly. Yeah. And this guy uh, was this guy went Scott's to a, still, right? This guy ratted on John Gotti and he's fucking going to the Mets. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Well, there's just no more organization anymore. <laughs> I don't like this. It's crazy to think that like, okay, some 93-year-old guy comes into your club and he's like, "Give me protection money." I and love that's like, that. That's, that's my amazing. Favorite <laughs> yeah. part. They should open up the film with that part. <laughs> I don't know who's maybe right? Al Pacino could play that's him. What, 
Because yeah. Al Pacino is very he's old. Getting up there, right? Honestly, he, we got to figure out what happens with the rest. He of looks him. like Pacino a little bit. He's a hundred years old now. Yeah. Like so, if the movie Pacino if, could play hundred, yeah. he's not going to quit. Yeah, he could go on to murder somebody else, and you that's like he, the end of the movie. He's the acting on the boss of the of the Columbo crime family right now. Right, exactly. Yeah. But, oh, uh, he is. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me tell you something. If the feds are actively watching him. They should be ashamed of themselves. Leave this fucking yeah. guy alone. Yeah. He's 100 years old. <laughs> Leave him alone. What if he's killing people, though? Actually, what about the Russians? Yeah. Go fuck with them. If you're yeah. 100 and you kill somebody, that person deserves to die. This guy's 100 years old. He's, let him, let him, we let him respect have our in. elders. <laughs> but you know something? He loves being a gangster so much yeah. that I bet you he gets oh, his yeah, walker yeah. And, and, and he goes for a walk and he fucking... He went to jail for so many parole violations. It's like comedy, they kept, too. They you kept know? catching him. Because uh, when you when you're on parole, you can't meet with any of your your associates. Yeah, and he kept getting caught meeting. Right. With yeah. He, yeah. That's how he was in jail forty years. He, he just kept on getting parole. He, he, all yeah. he went to jail for was talking to his friends. Right. <laughs> right. It's unbelievable. Yeah. He also uh, killed over two hundred fifty people. All right. But you that, know what? Who are we to judge? They, they weren't right. Vassar <laughs> graduates. <laughs> It's not like they were going to Vassa. You know what I mean? When they're, when Only I'm talking God about the, can judge me. Whatever they were. Right, they were fucking yeah. pieces of shit who broke the rules. Vassar. Yeah. It's funny how he brings them an all-women's college. It's a good school. No, it's not. It's, it not, a, it's, it's not a women's it's, college? There's a lot of homos there, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's famous for saying, I killed a lot of guys. You're not talking yeah, four, like, five, six, ten. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think the, 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 feds, the feds thought that he killed like 30 people or something, right? Oh, it's way more than that. 250. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be way you know, more than that. 200 is an average. We hope, Sonny, if you're listening, we know this is like a tribute to you. You know this is no, a tribute we love to him. you. We, yeah. we, we like this guy. Yeah. Yeah. I want to show you this picture I saw. He was good earlier. friends with Rocky Graziano, who he looks yeah. like. What if what, what if the one of those people he killed was like one of your friends or your dad or something? Let me tell you something. My, well, I have a friend that was killed. <laughs> and, I mean, murder uh, murder I, is I not who, good. I don't I, think murder is cool. I have a friend who was killed by the mob, and I know who ordered the hit. But it was an accident. He wasn't supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. Oh right, yeah. I you you told that story. Yeah, I before. saw this photo. Maybe we'll try to link to it in our uh, hell yeah. Yeah, it's just this old man on a walker, just getting helped along by his family. But if you look yeah, closely, good for you Sonny, <laughs> you can tell Which he's murdered a now, lot of he people. Had, he had eight kids, right? Uh, I I could look it up, but that sounds right. Yeah, yeah eight, eighteen grandchildren. <laughs> yeah, eight kids, eighteen grandchildren. I wish I had a family. Guy lived a good life. He's got a good family. Yeah, they're so eight happy. Kids, eight, uh, you eighteen know, grandchildren. Can you imagine the spread this Christmas Eve? At that, uh, can you imagine the galama, the stuffed galama, and the shrimp mm-hmm. marinara, and all that yeah. stuff? They're gonna have everything. And the scungeel and oh, the clams. <laughs> that scungeel is amazing. Man, I can't eat that stuff. I can't eat clams. I don't do seafood you don't like at all. Scungeel? No, I can't. It's I, so good. I thought I, I know people love it, and I just like I've eaten it so many times. I'm like, I'm just not into this. And this is Italian, or is this like yeah. Japanese? Scungeel is sea snails. Is it? Yeah, I had it one Christmas Eve. I liked it. It all sounds gross. You I know hate seafood. Stuff calamari. Wait a minute. Let me so see. Fucking, you ever had that, Mike? Stuff calamari? Stuff calamari? It's not like the circle. It's just they take a whole calamari uh-huh. and they stuff it. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, with breadcrumbs and cheese. We got to do a weekly segment here. We're going to do my a, phone. I know. It doesn't work, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to do a, a weekly segment. We're going to share a recipe every week. Right. Oh, that's what great. What do you think? I hate the feds, man. They're such fucking pricks. They don't know how to dress. <laughs> yeah. You ever see what they wear? Uh, they, no. go, they, they, get, they, go to, um, uh, they go to Alexander's, and it's mm-hmm. not even open anymore. They mm-hmm. still go. They go, like, where's Alexander's? They were so, the, the feds were so upset when Alexander's closed. Yeah. Because that was their main store. If you're a fed, you're going to like the way you look. I guarantee <laughs> it. They probably will shop at fucking Men's Warehouse. Hey, fucking pussies. Joseph Who, A. Banks. Well, this is what I want to know. Who aspires to be a tattletale? Because if you're a cop or you're a fed, your job is to, rap, is to tell them people. So yeah. who, who aspires to be that guy? Well, it could be a thing. Maybe you want justice. Maybe Just your dad. Maybe your dad killed your mom. Maybe yeah. you Maybe you're around violence and you want to help people. You could have started off a good guy. I don't know. There's some good cops out there. Found really? yourself some, talking to the wrong people. Wait, I just I want to see this guy's face. All right, so let's talk about the two kids. So, so the two important kids. Yeah. John Jr. was was the one who ratted yep. on his father. Yeah, that's correct. Probably not invited to Thanksgiving. <laughs> And then Michael was the one who became a, a Christian minister. John's That's gonna, right. John's going to be Michael, sitting. He's going to be sitting in his room eating fucking tuna out of a can. Yeah. Yeah. He was, saying, he was saying something like he was trying to whack his son during that trial. Oh, he was? <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, I, they son. didn't get it down. Well, let me tell you this. I'm going to put this out there. I don't like... Okay. Sonny, okay? We respect you, right? But... Like he's listening. But we but. think the way that you handled the situation with the meeting with your son was a little fucked up, and that's probably what made him want to leave the life. So I feel like Michael, even if Michael wasn't a rat, I think maybe he like 
had a right to be because they were going to kill him. Mike, you wait. Know? They were going to kill Mike? Yeah. Were they going to kill Michael? When? I mean, imagine joining something where it's like they tell you to kill your best friend or your best friend has to kill you. And it's like they have to, you have to do it. Are you talking about John or Michael? Michael. Okay. Did you hear about, did we get No, like what He's are you referring a to? a nuisance out of himself with this born again Christian crap. I love it. Like yeah. I said earlier, I think it's all a ruse and I love it. <laughs> He's a motivational a speaker, Frank. You yeah, know what I mean? He's got a movie coming out. The dude could do stand-up now. He's got a following. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Michael, you can't say that he's not a bright guy. He's probably smarter than no. his dad. No, he's very smart. But yeah. you know what? Italians are just charismatic. They could do anything. Yeah, thank you. People, yeah. people who ain't Italian. Too. Except. <laughs> I wish I was Italian. People who ain't Italian. Except get, are very, they're impressed release with one Italian. of these podcast episodes. <laughs> yeah. What? Except do the tech on it. You said Italians could do anything. Yeah. But. We do need an Irishman here to Is he Irish? equipment. Yeah, actually. Mm, good for you. How did you know? I don't know. I just guessed. <laughs> okay. You'll get over it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So so we'll go back. So so Michael, well, why don't we why don't we get into Sonny's uh the beginning of his life, his early life. Okay. Um it's a pretty pretty straightforward a, story, right? Yeah. He starts working for the Colombo family in the ninth and then in the fifties or sixties, he gets promoted to captain. And then by sixty four he was like the underboss. But then he was also he was discharged from the army. For having homicidal tendencies, <laughs> yeah. which is like hilarious. Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. They're like, you that, think you're going to you know, kill that, somebody? What, what, it was I, a you know war. What? There was you know a what? war happening. Fuck the army. Are you Let's kidding me? About the army. The army is <laughs> just full of, uh, full of a bunch of fucking pussies. They all play it safe. They no, got no. that stupid haircut. I, and you know what? I don't, I don't have no respect for the army. I have a <laughs> all I respect is the gangsters. I have a friend that was kicked out of the Air Force because they said he was uh, insane. Mm -hmm. but he wasn't insane. He's just an Italian kid. Mm -hmm. When you're Italian, everybody looks at you like you're crazy. When right. They, um, that's what homicidal <laughs> tendencies. Why? Because mm -hmm. you might probably smack somebody. It's it's called charisma. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that. That's, uh, when when I read that, I was like, that's bullshit. We are. We're an emotional people. We we feel emotion strongly. We love Can the I tell people you around us. I, I have a buddy who was like in that's the That's why we dominate show business. <laughs> that's right. I have a buddy who was uh, in the Gambinos. Uh, he's, he's away right now. And... uh he had alcohol problems, so he quit, and he went to meetings. So you know how they give jobs at the meetings? They give jobs. Like, you do this, somebody throws out the glass. Mm -hmm. So they said to my friend, okay, you make coffee for everybody. He, he stood up, he goes, listen, I used to hang out with John Gotti. I'm not making coffee for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't ask him to make coffee. He was like, I don't know this fucking guy. You know, he's yeah. the only, probably the only person in the fucking AA meeting who was it'd actually be, in the mob. It'd be so yeah, funny to see. Yeah, but that's probably see, why like, the mob kills so many people, because they're like, don't fuck around with us, we'll kill you. And then... And then they're like, yeah, all right. Because every Italian person is like, I'm in the mafia. <laughs> you notice, I was never in the mafia, but I grew up around it. And I have a little bit of that attitude. Yeah. Like people are telling me, why don't you uh, ask people for spots? I'm like, I'm not asking nobody for fucking spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, I just can't you do it. You go out there and you earn them yourself. <laughs> yeah. You should ask a little more, Frank. You're not doing enough spots. But I know, but I'm not, a, I can't ask. All right, fine. I just started asking and boy. Well, you're not Italian. <laughs> Yeah, it's rough, but you got to do it. Because if you don't do it, some other piece of shit is yeah. going to Some gonna Irishman is going to come this along and fucking this steal isn't all a, your This spots. isn't a business for guys like us. I know, it really isn't. Show business. Anyway. It's, it's a business you know what it is a jobs. business, though? Is uh bootleg and gas. That's uh, what his son did. You know uh, Oh, yeah, that was my, what? Sonny Franchese financed a film called This Thing of Ours. Mm -hmm. I don't, it's like a low-budget movie. Yeah. And uh, James Conn was in it and v Vincent Pastore. And uh, you know who else is in it? And he's great in it. Pat Cooper, the comedian. You know Pat Cooper? You yeah. know who he is? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's in the movie. He we talked a, about him before. Yeah, he plays a mob lawyer. And he, we could probably I get him. I would like on, to see him a lot. We, we could, could get him on the we, show. We could yeah, get him on the show. Bed you know, he was on um, Michael <laughs> Fox's podcast. He was? Yeah. Wow. You probably got to pay him. Yeah. But he's fucking, he's a legend. You Which know how one? funny he'll be in here? How much? You, the how jerking much he, he off podcast or the shame he, podcast? He's been, I don't know. He, he, he did, uh, oh. he does mafia weddings. Like he goes to the wedding and entertains. Yeah. They, they pay him 50000 Yeah, that guy. That I like to, good. I like to picture him on the Micah's you jerking know, off podcast. <laughs> cool. So, so, um, so Sonny becomes the underboss of the Colombo family. In, in 1964. In 1964. Yeah. And he goes to prison, right? What did he go to prison for? 1966, uh, he was able to avoid a conviction for murdering a rival and dumping the body into a bay. So it sounds like he was fine <laughs> in 1966. Yeah, the guy's been in and out of prison. Yeah, yeah. right. Just uh, like a bunch of times. And actually, like, he was telling an informant. There's this, because I found You know what he told one. somebody? What? He's like, wear a hand net when you kill somebody. So That's the what I was going to get into. That's what I was going to get into. So he goes, he says, uh, he says to a mob informant, uh, yeah, he goes, wear a hair net, dissolve the body, oh. no, chop the body up in a kiddie pool. Yeah. Yeah. We then microwave the, the parts. body parts first to dry them out. 
and in then a microwave, and then use a uh, industrial grade like, uh, garbage disposal. Yeah. You can't leave bodies anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like probably how he didn't get caught for stuff. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't his he first was like, rodeo. I think he's quoted in saying, "Like, listen, take the extra half hour, <laughs> hour, whatever it is, to yeah. dispose of the body properly." <laughs> Which is like, if you can do that in take a half the extra hour, that's half hour. But how how small are you cutting up these body parts? Are they just this fit guy in the goddamn is so microwave? funny. His quotes are so funny, man. Yeah. Oh man, I was reading them. I was dying. Yeah. Yeah. He also put nail polish on his fingertips to to avoid leaving fingerprints anywhere. You know what I was told? I just about? imagine his trip to Target. It's like nail polish, a hairnet, like you know what ladies, else works? Hairspray, shampoo, and they're like, "Hi, how you, you doing?" You know He's what like, else? No, no, works? no. I'm not a. I'm not some homo. <laughs> if you're about to be fingerprinted, because I kill people. If you're about to be fingerprinted, did you hear any of that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you're about to be fingerprinted, nobody's funny but me. You know that? I mean, I I don't I don't care if other people are making jokes on the show because because honestly, you know, I'm I'm the best fucking comedian in the world. <laughs> I'm the best uh, right now in, in in my circuit. Yeah. What do you call it? Um, if you put crazy glue on your fingertips, yeah, your fingerprints will come out different. So, right. Like if you're about to be fingerprinted, and you have a prior. Yeah. You just put some crazy glue like this on your fingers, and then you get fingerprinted. And you, you just get and, stuck to a steering oh. wheel, though. <laughs> You just I, get I was, the person's body stuck on your on your. Uh, I was told that actually by a kid I was locked up with. So I don't know how good it is. Oh okay. yeah, I've yeah. been through the system, smoking weed in Brooklyn. They fingerprinted me for that. They don't arrest you for that anymore. They did. Not how anymore. come we're How come we're better at crime than like the other people? We don't seem to get caught Italians. as much, or do we? We used to not get caught. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We just uh, we're just smart. And, you know, Italians were very poor at one time. That's where this all came from. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody middle class is doing this. That's how we worked our way up. We came from nothing, baby. Yeah. And now we have gold. <laughs> gold chains. Yeah. <laughs> gold and, and furniture jewelry. With, furniture with plastic on it. Why? What's with that? Why? What's I, the jewelry thing? Because I, it seems Italian. I take off yeah, my chain well, when I come I'll tell you why. Here. You do? Why? Because oh. I'm afraid it's going to get rubbed. I wear it all the time. Yeah. You ever walk here from the, from no, the J? It, yeah, all the, yeah, every day, Frank. You racist piece of shit. I'm racist. I'm not racist. I'm just. Uh, He's right. That's, that's a shitty stop. All right. Anyway, what? What's the shitty stop? <laughs> Myrtle, Myrtle Broadway. Oh, the Myrtle Broadway is a little rough. That's yeah. the block that Giuliani forgot. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little rough. <laughs> that's where they had that K two epidemic a few a few years ago. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anywhere you see just a food weed. bazaar, you know it's not good. Just smoke weed. I like food bazaar. Yeah, but it's a bad it's a bad name. But wherever that is, okay. Every time there's a food bazaar, either White Castle or food bazaar. Yeah. Good to know. Um, so anyway, so Sonny goes to jail, but then Michael decides that he wants to join. I think when, he, when he's like 19 or something, but uh, he told a story, Michael, in a documentary one time where it's like he was playing ball and the ball rolled away and this cop goes and, kept, and stops the ball with his foot. I don't know if this story is true or not. Sounds like a movie. <laughs> yeah, it, do, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, he is a good storyteller, right. Michael Francis, but um, so the cop stops the ball with his foot and he shows Michael his gun and he goes... Uh, you see this? Your father's going to get a bullet someday. And then Michael, he's like 10 years old. He goes, yeah, I just said, can I have my ball back, please? <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, I don't know if that's the way it happened because you're like 10. You're like, can I have my ball back, please? Like it's um, but uh, That's badass. Yeah. Coming from a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that, mean, it probably didn't happen that way, but. Well, I'd like to imagine it did. Like I could see like a young Frank being pretty brazen, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I was always a, a smart ass. Yeah. Hell yeah. I used to talk back to gangsters. I was a good boy. Yeah. I went to church and I didn't talk shit to anybody. <laughs> I was just a little bitch. One time, uh, one time I was eating dinner with my mother. We were having spaghetti and Paul Castellano walked in. And I said, you're just, a, you're just a fucking cuck. Do you know that? Paul? Ca <laughs> my mother dated Henry Hill, actually. She did? Yeah. Hmm. So I was going to say, like, this dude's 100 years old, right? Hey, wait. We just got to RIP Mrs. Terranova. Oh. She's not around anymore. Yeah, she Poor was great. Up. My mother was a tough. My mother was one of the toughest people I ever met. She was like five foot three, and men were afraid of her. Five foot three. Anyway, uh, yeah. So so Michael <laughs> Michael joins the Michael decides he wants to start earning, and he's actually he turns out to be like a really good earner. He's really smart, and uh, he starts bringing. I think he stole a meat truck or something. That was his first score, and then he gave the bosses like thirty percent. I don't think that's in your notes, but he, he yeah. gives the bosses like 30%. But then his dad told him it was like 20%. Do you know what the standard rate is that you kick up after yeah. a score? It it's can't like 20, be a It's like 20%, rate. right? Something like that. 
Yeah. I know when you, when you borrow you know? money off the street, you got to pay back 6%. Mm-hmm. That, that doesn't every, seem so bad. 6% every week until you pay off the whole thing. So if you borrow 3000 and then every compounds. week you're due to give them 6% of 3000 every week. And, and, and unless you give them the whole 3000 But if it's a week, then it's 3000 plus the 6%. So after six months, you owe them $94,000. <laughs> So what, 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 how six, does what, that work? You pay them. You pay them every week. Every week you do to pay six percent. Six percent of three thousand. Yeah, if you borrow three thousand. So that's eight. Let's say you borrow three thousand eighty dollars a week. Right. You have to give that every week until you pay off the three thousand. Yeah, Even but if then you how do they pay them two thousand up front or something? No, you if you give them two thousand and one eighty, you still then then you then the next week you owe them six percent of uh, one thousand. Okay. But how that's do they, reasonable. No, but how do they make money? No, it, it's not reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> they chop off people's fucking thumbs, Matt. Dude, it's like a great bank, you know? They got wow. a good rate. <laughs> they never go after anybody's families, though, right? Uh, no, not women and children. Women and children, no. Yeah, but they should have. They t- harassed him, though. I yeah. thought about that. I knew all- a guy who uh, who uh, went away, and then they went to his house, and they made his wife go to the bank and take money out and give it to them. Oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah. They won't kill her, but they'll fucking harass the shit out of her. Wait, so six percent of three thousand you yeah. have to pay back? Yeah, every week. No, we I can, thought, the, but I thought the interest rate is six percent. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Six, it's a weekly interest on top of it. Oh, a weekly interest, yeah. and then it compounds, right? So if you don't pay them at 180 that week, then this they'll, is confusing. If you don't pay them 180 that week, they beat you with a fucking bat. Right, and then next week it's six <laughs> percent of three thousand one hundred and eighty. Yeah. So it's six percent a week. Yeah. Oh wow, that's a lot. It seems reasonable. You don't have the money. Then this don't friend, borrow. then this friends' rates. Like if you're friends with the guy, maybe it's like three percent or four percent. Yeah, six okay. percent is for any mud off the street. Okay. I feel like some you'd... people are stupid. You know what they would do? Would they borrow six percent to make a better horse that they heard? They heard the horse is definitely gonna win. Yeah. So they put the three thousand down on the horse. The horse loses, and then they're like, oh shit! And they have a job where they make three hundred a week. Yeah. This is like you know, going back to the seventies. Right. So every week they take one hundred and eighty and give it to the mob, and they go home with their like one twenty to their wife. Yeah, I would imagine they would eventually have to and they go just rob gotta a pay bank forever, right? Yeah. When is it done? When the money gets paid back? When the money gets paid back. So the 180 is tacked on. And if the mobster goes away... Or so gets, they have to pay 180 a week. Yeah. But in addition to that, they have to pay. So right. you could pay 185 and then until you have the 3000 back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, you got your principal the guy, and you what, got your What interest. if the guy goes away or gets killed or something? Then they'd probably go to his family to get the money. No, what if the mobster goes away or gets then, killed? Then whoever takes over his book. Okay. It, it's like a book. Wow. Uh, the guy who runs the book. It's crazy how organized. I I don't think I have the the organized focus. crime. No, but I don't have the focus. I know, but <laughs> I don't have the focus to do this. I'd be like, oh, what do you owe me again? I wouldn't. Uh, they have it written down, I guess. Yeah, it's disorganized crime and some guy with like papers everywhere. It's not a book. Like in my neighborhood, it's if you crazy. Sold, they must make so much fucking. They're like autistic. In my neighborhood, if you started selling weed, uh, and uh, somebody heard about it, they would uh, give, uh, smack you around and say, "You got to give me tax. You got to pay me every week." Mm-hmm. And uh, it was funny when I when they got weed deals at and I was like I, I asked him uh, like do you have to pay anybody <laughs> like I yeah. thought that still goes on yeah <laughs> for the territory yeah like I'm like are you uh, kicking up to the owner uh, what uh, I don't think so I just sell weed and do two open mics a week literally if you sold weed in a schoolyard where like there was guys already planted there by wise guys mm-hmm. they would come there and beat the ever loving my my friend was in the hospital with a broken jaw just for selling a bag of weed mm-hmm. that wow. shit used to happen. All right, so Michael Francis. So it turns out he's actually a really good earner. And uh, back in the seventies, yeah, gas stations paid their sales tax to a third party company. So Michael Francis uh, developed a scam where he was like, "Hey, I'm the company you pay your taxes to," and then he would set up these dummy companies. And then by the time anyone figured out what was going on, they would just dissolve. And he made so much money with yeah. this gas with gas, this gas tax bootlegging. Yeah, yeah, which is like really smart. I know Frank doesn't like guys like that. Frank prefers people who like go out and hit somebody with a pipe. Yeah, you know? I like the street guys. He doesn't like. That, that's why I hung out yeah. with. I like. I like. That's what I like. Donnie you Brasco. Know? They're like breaking open a fucking uh, uh, a meter yeah. with yeah. a fucking sledgehammer. <laughs> right. That's this like what he would do. That's what he would go to prison for. Yeah. That's like small potatoes. This guy like created a scam. Somebody's like Frank. I found a way to siphon uh, t- ten dollars every time somebody. And Frank's like, "You're a fag." <laughs> Yeah, like isn't that like a Superman? What, num- I don't understand numbers. <laughs> <laughs> he was like a white collar gangster. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he also did. He was uh, a great earner, though. Yeah, yeah. He also did uh, entertainment and sports management, where he was just a oh, partner. 
when where he was, he was mob, yeah. yeah he was used to intimidate and uh, he was big in the disco scene mm. yeah <laughs> he was like a good looking guy too he wore those like dark uh, sunglasses and he uh, still he looks looked- good for a hun- uh, wait I'm talking about his son no yeah that's who I'm talking about okay yeah he still was- has that thick accent you see who yeah. Michael yeah yeah when he preaches he's like oh, God yeah. the Father <laughs> <laughs> all praise do. And I was looking him in the face, and I was stabbing him with the ice pick, and I thought, where is Jesus? (laughs) Jesus, Lamb of God. (laughs) Dude's rolling in money. He seems like... Do you think he's a stand-up guy, or you think he's, like, full of shit? I don't... He sounds like a fucking idiot. Yeah. I don't like him. Because he's white-collar. Yeah, he's a fucking pansy. All right, so here's here here was a big moment in Michael Franzese's life. So he's making all this money. The bosses think that maybe he's not kicking up enough to them. And, uh... (laughs) They call, and so his father, Sonny, calls him, and he's like, we need to have a meeting. But Sonny's like, I'm going to go in the meeting first, and then you'll go in. I don't like the sound of that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Sonny goes in the meeting, then Michael goes in after him, and the boss is like, what are you doing? Like, we, They're like, we know what you're we know what you're about. Like we don't, um, they thought he was like not kicking them up enough money or he was getting too powerful or kind of going over their heads. And he was like, he was like, no, it was something with the with the gas tax. They thought it was. They didn't know about it. I see. And they were yeah. mad at him because they didn't know about it. I don't think that's in your. No, notes. it's not. But anyway, so so Michael comes out of the meeting, and uh, his friend was in the meeting with him, and uh, his friend was like, "Yeah, your father was in that meeting before you, and he didn't like help you out at all. Like his his dad didn't like stick up for him, and for Michael that was like a big mind fuck. Oh shit! Who told him that the feds? No, his friend told him that. Uh. You don't trust anybody. What? That's like that's like a damning now, thing like that you a- would say to fuck with somebody, though. You know? Doesn't that seem like a thing you would just lie about even? Why? So, like, I, I mean, I don't know. He, but- so he took this guy's word for it and check with his old man. Maybe the kid was full of shit. Mm. This guy. The guy was full of shit. I don't, I don't know. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm on your side. It sounds wacky, but at the same time. Yeah, but even if you like, but but I think Michael realized then that like his dad cared more about this code than he did about him. Well, I think, you know? that's, uh, yeah, I guess so. That's what you got to do, man. It's what the when when they, when you get made, they tell you, listen, if you, if we call you and your wife is pregnant or your wife is dying, you still got to come. That's yeah. it. Yeah, but that's more important than your kid. Yeah, the, the family is more important than anything. Now, that wouldn't sucks. that wouldn't that fuck you up if your dad did that to you? If your dad just fuck you over. Because what? Because I think what they're doing is they're creating rats. Because that nobody, there's no, there's no connection, there's mm. no emotional connection there with these guys. So they're like, well, fuck, everybody's <laughs> gonna fuck me over or kill me, right? So they're gonna save their own skin. Yeah, there isn't really that. Like, I mean, they act like there's like a loyalty, but there isn't. There is. I, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's it's just it's just all dissolved with this Rico shit. That's what that's what brought everything down, man. Yeah, there used to be a loyalty. I Thanks mean, a, a lot, a, Giuliani. There's a lot of stand-up guys. self-hating Italian. There's a there's a handful of stand-up guys that went away and kept their mouth shut. You know, those are the great guys. There's but like, when you're in an organization where you're like, my own father is going to sell me out, that's got to fuck with you a little. Yeah, bit. I guess so. I, I mean, we don't know if it's this is hearsay. I mean, he's not going to sell you out to the feds, at least. I mean, you. I guess you know what. No, board, but it's like he's going right, to kill me. Right. So how do you, how are you supposed to have any relationship with your dad after that point? Great question. We don't know if this is true. Yeah, but Michael said it was yeah. in, in a documentary. Well, maybe he's. So I don't knows? trust him. <laughs> How come the rest of the fucking family's talking to the father? You think they'd talk to him? If, you, you think don't trust they would, anybody? You think they would talk to their father if their father was trying to kill? All right. Their so, so how about this? So, so knowing the guy that Sonny that Sonny was, yeah, you think Sonny's in there? Like, no, no, it's okay. My son's a good kid. He probably wasn't. No, he's he a stone pro- cold murderer. He's a psychopath. Yeah, he probably said, "Give so him a pass. It's my fucking kid. Give him a pass." What you know? But I mean, he's he in didn't. a position. He's in a position that he could ask for his, a pass for his son, and they probably give it to him, no problem. Yeah. So why wouldn't he do that? Who knows what this fucking guy who gave it? It's third if, party information. If you're like, if you're like the the child of an underboss, and you're on the table, I to guess, get but you don't. Up, yeah, but you don't trust sucks. anybody, Frank. I don't huh? want to be a part of you that. Don't trust anybody. Family. Not really. People are fucking scumbags. Yeah. But you trust, you seem to trust Sonny more than you trust this other guy. Yeah, what I doubt. Yeah. Just because he's higher up the food chain or no, just because I mean, you like his... Look, the rest of the family loves him, so why is that? If You think if they were trying to kill their, 
If they if if he was trying to kill their brother, you think they'd be okay with it? They don't believe it. They probably don't believe that. Yeah. Mm. They're all excited that he's out of jail. They're all like the daughter was crying on the news. Yeah. They're all happy. But Michael said Sonny never took responsibility for the stuff he did. Responsibility. Fucking took care of his family. Yeah. He's out. Well, Michael realized when he met his wife that he like he loved her more and he didn't want that life for his wife and his yeah. his kid. So then he quit. Sounds like a, a real pastor. sissy to me. <laughs> Cuz he was never a fucking street guy. He was a fucking white collar. He never fucking got his hands dirty. Yeah. Would Fuck. you ever quit comedy and become a pastor? No. No. <laughs> but why do you have to be a street guy? Cuz I just have more respect for street guys than I do for the other guys. Yeah. I just I mean that's where it's that's the ground zero of fucking the mafia. Mhm. Mm-hmm. It's like the guy. I respect comics who work hard more than people who just like make it because their father died in nine eleven or something. <laughs> All right, that kid's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that kid's a good comic. <laughs> you know what I mean? You guys are talking about You're a specific a piece- person. Yeah, of course we are. <laughs> there's not three thousand. No, there's one kids comic there. whose dad died on nine eleven who made it, and he's a good friend. Mike likes all these fucking guys. Yeah. I don't like anybody. I don't like anybody. The only good comics are me and... Uh, Andrew Casatano. And Pat Cooper. Yeah, Pat Cooper is a fucking... Pat Cooper is the greatest <laughs> Italian-American comedian. He's, he's, he's the old... He's the old <laughs> speaking, Sonny is the oldest living gangster. Mm-hmm. Pat Cooper is the oldest living legend in comedy right now. Because mm-hmm. Don Rickles died. Rodney died. He's the old... Oh, Joan Rivers died. So fucking Pat Cooper is the lo- oldest living comedy legend. <clears throat> and you know what I like about Pat Cooper? What about, uh, what about true- Chris Rock? Chris Rock's not old. Pat Cooper is true to himself. He never fucking, he didn't like that they put his name small on the fucking marquee in Vegas. He said, you know what? Put my fucking name the same size as yours. Yeah. I love Pat Cooper. That's good. You got to have that to make it in this business. He st- he's stood up to everybody. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you'll never take away my dignity. <laughs> <laughs> he loves the word dignity. Yeah. Yeah. My dignity. He goes, you never offend when you tell the truth. I love Pat Cooper. I now let's and- let's talk about John Jr. Then the Sonny's other son. I don't even know about this guy. This is a rat. Oh yeah. fuck him! Is Former associate of the Columbo family. Where is he? Son of underboss. He's in son Nebraska. We would like to know where he's he is. in He's in Nebraska. First- he's doing open mics with Jack Comstock. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Shout out to Jack Comstock. <laughs> you get, you get into witness protection and you start doing open mics. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, actually, it's good for him. He'll get less seen. That's, that's the yeah. worst punishment you can have. John's the first uh, New York mobster to turn on his, to testify against his father. But part of the agreement he made with the FBI uh, was to testify that he would not profit from his story as a mafia figure. Yeah, they make people do that. That's weird. Yeah. Now, what is this right here? It says he was allegedly responsible for his father's parole violation. How, yeah. How... Am, in what, in what way, Matt? So, okay. Fill us in there. So, like, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, did you read about this stuff? A little bit. Yeah. So, basically, uh, like, this is, like, the where he was wearing a wire, you know? And, uh-huh. uh, you know, he's trying to get accepted back into his confidence. And he basically. His dad's confidence? Yeah. After he testified against him? No, no. This is, this is around the same time. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, the, he. It, He's basically like crying. He's like in tears being like, <laughs> he's like, what is it? I don't want to get this. I would never do that. No matter what kind of trouble I had uh, as he's wearing a wire. <laughs> right. These guys, they have so much, they have so much balls before they rat. <laughs> I love it. Cause he's like a little bitch and he's like on tape doing it. Yeah. He probably he wasn't as talented as uh, Michael was. Right. No way. It sounds like he was just the older brother who was the fuck up. Yeah. Now, Sonny killed like over 250 people. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, <laughs> I guess I don't know. <laughs> we, we don't really know, do we? Yeah, no. That's what Frank was saying earlier, though. That's what the feds are saying. You know, they, they exaggerate. Right. They're assuming. We're going to do a thing where we bring in a psychiatrist and they just analyze Frank. <laughs> well, I like, think he can't analyze me. Like, you know what? Good, because those people were all fucking scumbags, and they probably deserved it. <laughs> Analyst does Analyzm doesn't work on me. It doesn't work on me. You know, I, I know a guy whose parents are psychiatrists, mm-hmm. and he said what his parents say is therapy works on some people. It either helps you, it either make, leaves you the same, and some people it makes them worse. Mm-hmm. Right. I think I'm one of the people it makes worse. Yeah, because they just go to pour out their feelings, and it's like nothing's ever accomplished. Yeah, nothing's ever accomplished. Why don't you go earn some money? 
Who, me? <laughs> no, the oh. people who go to therapy. Yeah, right? Go earn. Therapy is for fucking indulgent motherfuckers. Oh, I want to go talk about myself. Exactly. To some fucking stranger who doesn't yeah. give a shit. It sounds oh, you know great. What they love? You know what they love saying? <laughs> well, we're going to stop right here. Yeah. They love saying it. <laughs> Just when I'm fucking about to say something. Okay, Frank. Uh, We're going to stop right here. Fuck Frank's you, fuck. <laughs> the next word whore. was about to yeah. be. Fucking like... not, you, you big not knowing me, fucking slut. Uh, she doesn't know me, this fucking bitch. And then the, then the other one's like, I love you. Yeah, fuck out of here. You love me, let's go outside and uh, let's go get an Uber and get a blowjob. You know oh, I mean? you had a woman, a women therapist? Yeah, she fell in love yeah, with Yeah, she him. fell in love with him. Oh. Did you not hear that when he was talking? No, 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 I didn't. I said, you know, she asked me, have you ever thought about having sex with me? Mm. I said, yeah. She goes, do you jerk off when you think about it? I All said, right. yeah. This doesn't seem like good therapy. So she goes, Is this real? She goes, yeah. She goes, well, let's say in about 10, I, I said, I said, uh, why? You, you, you ever think about me? She goes, I can't say that. I said, why? We can't, we can't go out? She goes, well, if in 10 years I'm not with my husband and we run into each other, but there's a code uh, ethics, and blah, 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 blah. she wanted mm. the fuck. Mm-hmm. Nice. She was from some like Eastern European place. Mm. She, she was Italian? Or oh, what? no, she was uh, Hungarian. Hungarian? Is that Eastern European? Yeah. Yeah, that's what she was. We should go find her. <laughs> yeah, let's look her up and get her. I found her pocket. on Facebook. Frank's like, and then I was in a in a bag, and they were hitting me with with um with sticks, and uh, and the therapist's like, oh, we need to stop right here. <laughs> Just cut it off. She the most really dramatic. didn't like my ex girlfriend because I was in there crying about my ex girlfriend, and Who? she was like, she didn't want me to like 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 her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, what are you gonna do? So where's where's John? Where's John now? Uh, he's uh he's uh in the wind. He's in the witness protection program. In he's the in wind. The, is that what they call it? Uh, I mean, I just said it. I sound. I think it is. This he's guy. he's doing open mics this with guy. Georgia Ray Comstock. <laughs> That's right. I kill myself. He's, wait, he's waiting for his name to get called. <laughs> He's at some like, uh, can I, I gotta get out of here. Can I go early? <laughs> like, who the fuck are you? He's like, <laughs> do you mind if I uh, go first? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because uh, yeah. the mob is looking for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you guys on Tinder? <laughs> I went on a Tinder date the other night. Can you imagine his premises? You ever yeah. like chopping up a body in Bay Ridge? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm turning into my mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, that, that was his, what about... Now what do you th- what about Sonny's legacy? What is that? Uh, he still he still got more to do. That's the whole thing. I feel like who's the, oldest he, living gangster. If he's the underboss, who's who's the boss? Oh, um, of who's the, the boss family? right? Who's the boss right now? Oh, that's a great question. Um, Probably somebody. Never yeah, heard I could of. list four guys, and you could tell me if I know where they eat dinner. Joe, uh, Prof- oh shit, I he, can't pronounce that's Italian 60s. names. That's from the sixties. Profaci. Profaci. Okay, Joseph no, Magli Coco. No. Uh, I mean, I'm giving. There's four names. You know, this is all what do you, Wikipedia. What do you, wait, but so the guy's 100 years old. What do you think he's gonna do now? He's gonna. He likes doing mafia stuff. Yeah. Obviously, he's gonna keep doing it. But what's he gonna do? Like he's he's in a walker. He's, he's gonna confirmed. shake down people at the store. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna go have dinner with Italianissimo. You ever eat there? No. They have the best risotto you ever had in your life. Oh yeah. It's in. Uh, Stand we gotta Island. go. Italianissimo. Italianissimo. You know how I found out about it? We're going, boys. Uh, some guys that got picked up by recently. Um. They, uh, they were like, yeah, they were having dinner at Italian Nismo. I'm like, that must be a good place. So my sister goes, I'll take you after your birthday. So let's go to Italian Nismo. So we go there. She goes, how'd you hear about this place? I said, some guys who got arrested at dinner here recently. She goes, that's how you decide if a restaurant's good? I'm like, yeah, I've, I've always done that. <laughs> right. I used to go to Giamboni's because it was right near the courthouse, and that's where Gotti used to eat in between court. Really? If it's Italian yeah. food. Yeah, nobody's getting arrested at like Roberta's in Bushwick. <laughs> yeah. That overpriced fucking dump. <laughs> Taco <Yep>. Bell. <laughs> Anybody that goes to Roberta's oh is, yeah. is, first of all, they're not Italian. Tray. Yeah, right. Second of all, uh, they can go fuck themselves because that's the worst place. It's the worst pizza. It really is the worst pizza. It sucks. Thank you. Yeah. You ever been? <laughs> no. It's oh, trying it to be good. I it's, thought I thought you said a Mexican. And it's trying food way too hard. It's like being in a fucking Portlandia sketch. Yeah, the it's, outdoor. Yeah, that's like where people. Big, that's where like hipsters. That's go That's where to eat hipster. Tra- yeah, that's. Yeah. Where Did they you go. say Alberta's? Well, Roberta's. Roberta's in Bushwick. You know, it good. sounds yeah. it sounds like Mexican the two main food. I thought you were making I go a joke. To Lombardi's and Two Tones. See, I don't like Lombardi's that much. I got a small you know pizza from there. It was like twenty six dollars. Small. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, Lombardi's is good. I like Ruba Rose is really good. That's the Joe and Pat. I've never been to. I, John. John Pats is great. Yeah. Jimmy Max on Staten Island. Nunzio's, Danino's. Why don't we rate the top five pizza places in the city? 
Okay, two bros, number one. Shut the fuck up. Number two. Go I saw a regular Cut girl having a slice off. of two bros today. I told a regular girl. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I understand crackheads eating in there. Yeah. Right. People down in there. <laughs> I saw a regular girl eating in there. I, could, I, I, I couldn't believe it. Um, she was just sitting down in there. You know how they got those like yeah, yeah. chairs that were made out of fucking, made by the people who work there? Yeah. I'm like, are you really just having a 99 cent slice right now? How bad is your life? Uh huh. That's unbelievable to me. Is there a 99 cent? Dollar Pete's is not terrible, though. Cent oh, place anywhere good. that's. Okay. Huh? I mean, what's two an, brothers okay? is fine, but it's yeah, but it's Joe's fucking, pizza. It's dollar pizza. Joe's. And that's a dollar slice in the no, village. It's 275. No, it's two seventy five. Joe's, Joe's, and Prince Street are probably the best slices. Prince Street has that pepperoni square that's pretty damn. Good. I've never been to Prince Street. I go to Joe's. We did not do our research this week, folks. So we were just filling the time. <laughs> uh, my top five is two tones. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Then uh, Lombardi's. Then uh, Sam's. Yeah, on Sam's Court Street. Is good. Uh, you ever been to Pauly G's? No, they're good. I'm not gonna go there and wait with all the fucking, fucking trendy, schmendy assholes. Mm-hmm. I don't wait for anything. If no. they tell me to wait, I, I leave. I'm really? not waiting. Yeah. You know how many times I'm on a date and and we get into a fight because I I lose my temper over the service. Uh huh. Could you tell us about your date? This... Oh, I went on a date on Friday. No way. Rank the pizza places first. Okay. Lombardi, uh, two tones. Lombardi, Sam's. Uh. Trying to think, I don't think I. I think that's it. I can't go five. Yeah, it's hard. All right, I'll go in no order. Danino's, Joe and Pat's. Uh, oh pr- yeah, I can go five. Yeah. Then uh, uh, Jimmy Max and then Joe and Pat's. Where's Jimmy Max? Stand out. Okay. I'll go Danino's, Joe and Pat's, Prince Street Pizza, uh, Paulie G's, and Tatona's. You ever had Pizza Geo's? Tatona's is great. We got to go down there. It's amazing. Pizza Geo's. Pizza Geo in Staten Island. Oh, that place is okay, actually. Yeah. I thought they were just okay. Michelle Conrad recommended it to me. Yeah. You know her? I No, but I, somebody recommended it on a, on a Facebook there once. We got this pizza with stracciatella, and I thought they were like trying a little too hard. I think... Uh, right? Yeah, I guess so. I heard they're You like enough. stracciatella? Not really. I don't like it either. It's too it's too much. Joe Rombi told me Danino's isn't good anymore. Joe Rombi's a retard. Oh, he's a nice guy. Joe Rombi is I mean, if old... they didn't go to jail, I don't want their food wreck. Am I right, Frank? Wait. No, I like Joe Rombie's a nice guy. He but, is a nice guy. But no, Danino's is still good. Eh, maybe they're not as good as they used to be. I definitely, I think I like Joe and Pat's better. Lee's Tavern? Lee's Tavern is good. Deborah likes Lee's Tavern. Deborah, Come in here. Nunzio's? How do you guys yeah. know this many Nunzio's places? Is this is, that's all we do. Hold on. What, what about on. Uh, Jimmy Max? My, my girlfriend's here. Rank your rank your top five your top five Hi. pizza in New York. Joe and Pat's Danino's. Um, I like John's Pizza on. Uh, what Bleaker are you kidding Street. me? Yeah. Well, it's, what are you kidding me? I like. I don't. I don't. I like Brothers in Staten Island, but I like the Square Slice. I like Totono's in Coney Island. I like Defaris. What was that? Oh, Defaris is good. Yeah, Defaris is as. People and act like, oh, and Lucali's good in Carroll Gardens. So I'll go Danino's, Joe and Pat's, Lucali. Yeah. Lucali's closed. I, I haven't been it is? There. Yeah. They, re- they reopened as Jess Penis. Really? <laughs> you know Jess Penis? No. I don't have it. No, no. Penis. Grimaldi's closed and they reopened as Je- Jess Penis is great. I thought Grimaldi's is under Wait. the Brooklyn Bridge. That was my one of my last dates with my ex before she fucking dumped me. They reopened this, as Jess Penis? Jess Penis is great. The it's owner got stabbed. Jess Penis? Yeah. No, that's no, LMB. Of, of Lucali. Lucali. No, that guy got shot to death. Oh, I forgot about LMB though. That's a really good pizza place. No, they're not as. I good. like their they're square not as slice. Their their sauce is too oregano heavy. You just don't like oregano. One time I got so mad right, at Mike that I dumped. <laughs> all right, thanks, I Deb. dumped tomato sauce all oh, over okay, his sneakers. Okay, fine. Who cares? <laughs> oregano shouldn't be in sauce. And no, it shouldn't be in sauce. Thank you. I don't like it. It's too strong. Who puts strong. oregano in sauce? Thank you. What do you use it for? I don't know. I don't dried oregano is fucking disgusting. I use it because my scumbag mother used to it. put it on her. My my mother used to make English muffin pizzas. Ba- and they were kind of gross. You put basil in in in, in, sauce. in sauce, not oregano. not oregano. Fresh oregano is good. It's got a little bit of a lemony like flavor I know, I, to I, it. I, I don't know what you would put oregano on. What? I don't know what you would put it on. You put it like I think there's a pasta dish, uh, penne penne alla vecchia that you put oregano oh. on, but um. Yeah, but uh, fresh oregano is good, but dried oregano is... My mother would make English muffin pizza with, with tomato paste, oregano, and, like, cheese. That and sounds it, terrible. It was terrible. My mother's a piece of trash. Uh-huh. 
She's not from the Italian side of the family. That's rude. Okay, Mike, the good. wires are going around your package, like, awkwardly. Okay, thanks, Deborah. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, hey, you can really see that dick, dude. Thank you. All right, let's talk about Sonny's legacy. What do you leave behind? What's what's what does the future hold in store for our, this good friend of ours? <laughs> Eighteen grandchildren. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. So you know, just keep on leaving that legacy. Let me ask you this: Do these guys ever like? Do they do they slow down or cool off a little bit? Does he become like a like a nice old man? I'm sure he's. I'm sure he's a very nice know. guy. Yeah. You know. But he killed so many people. Oh please. But oh, he killed over 250 people. <laughs> it's over the course of 100 years, that's not a lot. Yeah, it's like two and a half guys every year. Yeah, yeah that's true. There's at least two people per year I want to kill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, well, let's do this. How about uh, Sopranos? You watched the pilot. Yeah, right. What did you think of the pilot? Matt's got some questions for us. Yeah, so I watched the pilot, and uh, I tried to just write down some questions for you guys because i'm not italian at all all right we'll try to answer them so i figured okay so like first question Fra- frank frank is way more italian than i'll ever right be, I so mean, i feel like a lot of these questions frank are is for exponentially frank, more italian than me but you could definitely jump in all right like uh, like i'll tell you that, like all the sex i've ever had is consensual <laughs> oh, yeah. oh that's a dig you're just you're being picky now dig it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so like he says, uh, you know, he's like he's got to lie about his business in The Sopranos to his therapist and other people. So he yeah, says, he's in waste uh, management. Yeah, he says he's in waste management. I was just wondering what are some other professions you would lie? Plumbing supplies. Yeah, well, the thing with the garbage business is a lot of it is like cash, you know, because businesses have trash they need taken out, and it's like, hey, pick up my trash. Here's some money. So it is it is easy to hide and launder your money. Okay. Um, in that way. So just cash heavy business. Entrepreneurship. You, you could say I'm a businessman. And Entrepreneur. Yeah. You also, own a strip also, club. uh, podcast networks are a great way to <laughs> launder money. There was a, a company. I'm semi retired. Uh, That's a shut the thing. fuck up. There was a podcast network called, uh, I, I forget the name of it, Breakthrough Radio. I think it was called Breakthrough Radio or something. And uh, it was the first like podcast network of like when, pot, when people, yeah. you know, around a start to have podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is back in like 2010. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, they would just lose money. The whole point is to lose money. Right. So the guy could just launder money. Launder the it. money and it's clean. Yeah. So if you want to have a business that you need to launder money from, it's got to lose. So like. Open up like a comedy club, uh, <laughs> you know, like a comedy theater or a something hotel. like that. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. What would you do if you had to launder money? What would you open? That's a good question. Shut that fucking dog up. I think you do a church. For lunch. You do a mega church. I would open up a, a mega church. They make a lot of money. I would open up a, a vegan Italian restaurant. Oh, it yeah. also does comedy. <laughs> and uh, it's in Bushwick. <laughs> no. Comedy seven nights a week. Be, and, and that could be successful. Vegan out there. comedy. They're like, hey, hey, don't kid. Yeah, we need someone to uh, scare all our customers away. <laughs> uh, people are gonna be eating dinner. Can you go up and just talk about your penis? <laughs> Bring some girl up and have a talk about a period. And if people get grossed out because they're eating, she goes, "Oh, what? The fucking guys can talk about their dicks." <laughs> it's gonna be Italian food. That is the thing they say that I don't Italian I don't see food that. I don't and see comedy. Goes. And I'm gonna call it. Pasta fungu. Nice. Um, next question. Next question. Um, do you need to have a like an immediate family to move up in a, in the um, mafia family? Yeah, it's better. It's better. Yeah, and that's just because like you know your wives can talk and your kids can play and yeah, they like to keep it insular. I guess they like to establish that loyalty, right, with people. Yeah, you know, you don't. You, it's hard to trust people in that life, so you want to have people on you could trust a little bit at least. Right. And then you go into a meeting and you don't even help out your son. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's allegedly. I don't trust this fucking guy. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Why do you trust Sonny and not Michael? Because Sonny's a stand-up guy. This fucking son is on, going around acting like Billy Graham. Hey, mm. we could probably we could probably get it as a phone interview with Sonny if you guys want to. No, Sonny? he would never talk to us. No. And, and, and he's smart enough to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just hope he has a good Christmas. That's so wonderful. Well done. Okay. Matt calls him up. Hey, uh, do you know what a podcast is? <laughs> do you wanna... We should get Pat Cooper. Seriously, we should get Pat Just... Cooper on the show. All right. I bet we can. We should have him on for the He'll John Gotti. He'll come right? Uh, no. Yeah. We might have to do it at the Creek. But we should uh, definitely have him on for the Gotti episode because he knew him. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. 
the Gotti episode is going to be like three parts. Yeah, that's going to be my favorite. People will be psyched. I have one more we're question. Also, we're excited for the uh, the Greg Scarpa episode. It's going to be good, too. What did he do? Well, he was an informant, but he helped. He's the guy that helped the FBI find those bodies. Oh. Scumbag. Yeah. A lot of times it's, it's like they didn't dig you the are hole. So, you know what? You're what? so fucking one-dimensional. What? Any, oh, anybody who talks to the feds is immediately a piece of shit. You, yeah. don't, you don't care what they were going through or what was happening or, nope. or what they did. Maybe they, they had a bad What set? if they worked with the feds and they cured cancer or They're something? They're spineless. <laughs> never talk to cops. I would never have a, I would never have a, help a cop do any. If a cop said, excuse me, I'd be like, no, I'm not talking to you. Yeah, but they they found missing civil rights workers. Who gives a shit? <laughs> what a fucking piece of crap. You said something last week that stuck with me all this week, and you said, like, they did it wrong. The first person that ratted should have had his entire family murdered and right. just fucking tortured, and nobody would have ever ratted again. Right. That's been going through my head all week. But you're the kind of guy who, like, you would never rat on anybody, and then you would realize that all these people would rat on you, and it would it would fuck with your well, that, head. Well, then they can be the pieces of shit, but I'm not going to turn around and be a piece of shit because somebody else is a piece of shit. I'm mm-hmm. going to have fucking scruples and integrity and, and, and honor. Mm-hmm. And that's the way I carry my... I, you I can like say to, a lot about Mr. Frank Terranova, but the, the guy has integrity. If I'm going to have integrity like that, like Frank... Yeah, I, you never would. I need to be taken care of in jail. That's, let's just say that. I don't want to have, like, some shitty experience well if you go to jail for mafia <laughs> stuff you go to the federal pen- penitentiary it's not like a state prison yeah okay you get to have uh i think they have veal cutlets on tuesday i don't know i want to play cards yeah they play friends. cards you know we got to do one episode Pinochle. there's this Pinochle, guy baby. there's this guy angelo lutz he was in the philly crew yeah and he's got these like cooking videos on youtube and they're like disgusting because he does it with this woman he's like groping her the whole time <laughs> But he's like showing her how to like make like broccoli rob. And he's got his hands all over her and he's like making jokes and like he's touching her. It's, no. Yeah. Yeah, we should we'll play one on the uh on the next episode. That's great. I wanna see. Oh, I mean it's not great. Do you know who he is? I never heard of him. Oh, he went away for like nine years or something. I don't pay attention to what goes on outside of New York. Yeah. Right. That's like small time. Those other guys. Everything outside of New York is small time. What are your other questions? I just yeah. Uh last question is uh okay, so he, uh, he, like, gets that guy to be indebted to him with cruise tickets, you know? Or oh, he's trying Artie? to, at least. Artie? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I couldn't remember his name. You know what's funny? I mean, I've said this a million times, but I think in the pilot episode of Sopranos, Tony was supposed to be the boss because he's got the big house. Mm-hmm. And, because in the rest of the series, he's a captain, and then he works his way up to be the boss. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so so in I was the, gonna say in, I thought he was the I thought he was the boss. Not at the beginning of the series. At the beginning of the series, he's a captain because they have a meeting with the okay. with the captains and they're like, "Who are we gonna make the new boss?" Ah, but there's a line where he's like, "Yeah, my father never reached the heights that I did," mm. which implies. And then Uncle Junior says, "You might run North Jersey, but you don't run your Uncle Junior," which implies that Tony is the boss and Junior is under him. Right. But then as the thing went by, they make Tony a Tony's a captain. Yeah. And Jackie April is the acting boss. Another character is the acting boss okay. who has cancer. Yeah. For, based on what I saw, it seemed like Junior was just a little bitch. Remember was Jackie like, April Jr.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He well, peed the his worst pants. actor ever. What do you mean he peed his pants? When he got shot. He did? They were like, what's that stink? He peed his pants. Oh, boy. He's like, I'm on with mommy. And they, and they shot him. I don't know what I'd do. No, that was that was uh, Matthew Bevilacqua. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jack, who was Jackie Aprile got shot in the back of the head. Oh, oh I, I confused Sorry. I confused those two. Yeah. Lilo he was acting, Bron- he's like, Lilo remember? Broncato, the guy who killed that. Uh, yeah. yeah. He didn't kill the cop. He was just there. Right. Another guy got railroaded. When, yeah. uh, when I think if you kill a cop, it, it shouldn't really count as a crime. He didn't kill a cop, though. <laughs> he didn't kill a cop. First of all, that cop was off duty. They didn't know he was a cop. He came in there like a fucking cowboy. Yeah. And everybody makes it like, oh, the guy from the Bronx tale killed the cop. No, he didn't. Yeah, he just happened he's... to be there. Exactly. He was high. And he didn't even know the guy was a cop. Right. He shouldn't have went to jail at all. And also, cops shouldn't have special treatment if they get murdered. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, that's been another... No, just kidding. Uh, you want to share a recipe or something? Um, I, I really love onions and peppers. All right, I'll share my sausage and peppers recipe. Here's something I do. Uh, I start with the sausage. I cook it in water. I simmer it in water just to get it, you know, get it going, keep it nice and moist. Then I fry up the peppers and onions. I put the peppers in first. I cook those for about 10 minutes on high heat because peppers need a long time to cook. Then I add the onions, and I uh, I just let it cook until it's, like, charred, until it cooks down, like, a lot, till it's, like, almost all, you know, almost burnt. And then I put the 
sausage on the uh, cast iron, and then I, I mix them together. Sounds good. I just I found know, out. It doesn't, it's nothing. People do them many different ways, but I really like it when the peppers get cooked down like really nice and they get a nice You know what I had it. Sunday? I haven't had it in a long time. Peppers and eggs. Oh, yeah. How nice. good is that? Real good. I don't think I've had it in a while. That's what really? I've been having what all the it? time on this what diet. What is it? You just saute peppers and, and, yeah, and scrambled eggs. Oh, okay. It's fucking dope. And, and onions. Yeah. Some people put potatoes and then fresh mozzarella if you want to get crazy. Shelby oh, was okay. putting zucchini in that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. No, what's, I mean, what, what's her nationality? Um, white? I don't. You don't even know what she is? I don't. Come on. How do you Should not I? know what? No, no, no. You got to read, read the package. You don't know what she is? Uh, no. I mean, her, her, you know, I know where she's from and you know, I met her I, grandparents. Where are you from? Where am where'd I you, from? Where'd you grow up? Uh, Minnesota. You know what I think? I think people that aren't from New York, they don't get caught up in nationality. It's nope. just like we're all white and that's it, right? Is that that's more? Right. I mean, more or less. Like yeah, yeah. once you get older, you kind of realize there's. I noticed that more shit going on. My my cousin was dating a guy from New Mexico, and when he came to meet the family, my sister first question was, like, "What's your nationality?" Mm. And he said, "I'm American." And my sister was like, "No, I mean, like, what's your nationality?" Yeah. He's like, "I'm a, I'm a, I'm like this, 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 and this." He's like, and we we just rolled our eyes. Like, who's this fucking guy? You know. <laughs> <laughs> What are you bringing into the family? This guy doesn't even know what he is. It's not like he ratted on anybody, uh, right? He ended up being a prick. She doesn't like him anymore. Oh, good. All worked out for the best. All right, folks. Right now, we're going to do a little segment I like to call Rat of the Week. I wish we had a sound bite or something to put in there. To come up with one, I'll like, add like it. Like the sound of rats squeaking? Just shoot me a message of something you like, and I'll, I'll add it. Oh, like oh, rats oh. squeaking. Rats, Let me see uh, if I can find yeah, one. The sound of rats. Folks, this, we're in the early stages of the show, but... I'm going to see if I can find a... Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to do a little segment we like to call Rat of the Week. <laughs> How does that sound? No, this is terrible. <laughs> He's like watching What the fuck is this? YouTube There's video. a video on here. Rat stuck in glue trap and squealing. <laughs> That's the name of this video. It's How got 1.3 million views. Oh, wow. How many thumbs up? 5K. Some fucking animal. You know who's First hot? success with glue Lauren traps. Lapkus. What are the comments No, like? she's not. Get the fuck out of here. I think she's so pretty. Really? Yeah, I, I think she's hot. Ooh, you don't that, think so? That rat is totally dead. There's a girl named... Uh, I, I kind of like unconventionally attractive women. Well, that's what she is. Yeah. Because when... It, no, maybe I should turn this off. Um... <laughs> When somebody it's be is hard like, to concentrate. This is fucked up. Somebody just filmed this and put it on YouTube. <laughs> what the fuck? It's is got five K likes, four K dislikes. What's the top dislikes. comment on it? What's the top comment on it? Uh, the top it's comment be so is up. Uh, Puerto Ricans need to be. Uh, <laughs> it's about something about the Jews. Somebody goes, "Oh man, Rat Tatui hit rock bottom. Did the rat shit itself? <laughs> this is bad." Okay. Uh, the, these glue the traps should up. these glue traps should be like like prohibited. They should be illegal because it's not humane. Because then you have to kill the rat, the mouse. What do you do? You smash it with a something heavy. No, I know, but that's like inhumane. I think you're supposed to drown it. <laughs> that's worse. No, drowning's a peaceful way of dying. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it is. I'm pretty sure it is. Um. Anyway. Oh, okay. So here's. Here's my rat of the week. Now, Frank, I know you don't follow politics, okay? But. <laughs> all right. So you sit this one out then. I'm listening. You sit this one out, cowboy. All right. Here's my problem, right? <laughs> sure. Go ahead, Mike. Trump's going to get fucking real. I'm not a Trump guy at all. You but the guy's going to get reelected. Okay. Because the way the media tells stories, okay, is so dishonest. And that's how he won. All he had to do was say the media is dishonest. And that's a, a thing that is undeniable. The way they tell stories, the way they present stories, they always make it seem like it's way worse than it actually is. For example, this week, somebody there, there was a headline. Uh, Scott Bayo's wife tells, uh, tells a Sandy Hook mother that, that maybe her kid is dead because she's ugly. And that's the headline? Yes. <laughs> S says maybe, maybe her kid is in a better place and she's ugly. Now, that's not exactly what my good friend Denise Bayo said, okay? <laughs> what, is, what, is Scott, uh, what is Scott Bayo's wife's name? Denise. That's no, her close name's enough. Chachi or something. 
Frank, I got like 200 new followers. Uh, Bayo. Bayo. Scott. Renee Bayo. Oh, and she's locked. Let me follow you, baby. Um, <laughs> pray for Texas. Uh, now, that's not exactly what you said. Now, now her, her and her... Scott Bayo and his wife have these beliefs. They're they're Sandy Hook truthers. They think it was a false flag. Okay. And that's the great thing about this country is you can believe what you want to believe. You can get right. on Twitter and say what you yeah. want. Now, yeah. Now, Denise Bayo, sorry, Renee Bayo, she she goes, she got into a fight with this lady who lost a kid at Sandy Hook, but she's like, your kid is in a good thing, your kid or something like your kid is in a better place now. Your ugliness knows no bounds. Now that's not ex- now that's a shitty thing to say, but that's not exactly your kid is dead because you're ugly. And if they continue to do this type of stuff, he's going to get reelected because people people go, well, wait a minute, that's not exactly what's happening. They have no fucking integrity, and they'll do anything. And it's like create that's creating more of a distrust than Trump is when he says, oh, fake news. Liberals right? liberals exaggerate and they go with it. They exaggerate yeah. and they go with it, and that's why like there's no credibility. So we got to stop this shit. We got to go to Huffington Post, set their office on fire. <laughs> liberals are mostly young, uninformed people yeah. who don't know what they're talking about. I'm not a conservative or anything, but I don't. Conservatives don't really irritate me the way liberals do. Sure, sure. Plus, they're at the forefront of the censorship movement. Yeah, I mean, now I saw a, this. Might have to be the second episode because I saw a um, Huffington Post article. Okay, and it was like. <laughs> Trump during the midst of the hurricane, Hurricane Harvey is happening right now. Yeah. I don't know when this episode is yeah. going to air. We're getting our footing. We're getting a lot of episodes in the can, mm-hmm. but it's still relevant because, um, yeah, you know, like Hurricane Harvey. Trump Harvey's- during Hurricane Harvey, Trump is still plugging his merchandise, and now they're making it sound like he's giving a speech. He's like, oh, "Yes, the hurricane's bad. Buy my merchandise," <laughs> but really, all he was doing was just wearing his hat that he sells on his website. Which isn't as bad. It's not what they made it out to be. I mean, technically it's true, but, but you wish there people. would be less cucks about it. Just like No, but fuck these people. Yeah. Because they're they're lying. They're not telling the story the right way. If they had said he's wearing his brands, yeah, I guess that's not as interesting of a story. But you're creating distrust and now you're like, Yeah, they are a bunch of liars. So and I and people like Trump because he's you know, they think he speaks honestly. Yeah, so the the rat of the week this week is the media. Is what you're saying? Yeah, all of them. Fuck the scumbag media. <laughs> They're all scumbags, except for my good friend Scott Bayo. We wish him well. I like the New York Post. Do you think Sandy Hook was a false flag? What Sandy Hook? The shooting in Connecticut with all the kids. I don't recall it. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I think it I was. was a big deal. I can't keep up with all these shootings. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the one where they wear trench coats? It was, no. That was Columbine, which was like 20 years ago. Sandy Hook was the children, children. Sandy Hook yeah. sounds like a, a flooding. Yeah, okay. It does, I guess. All right. Well, that might be it for this week. Do you want to plug anything? No. Okay. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> you want to plug anything? No. That's right. Hold on a second. I'd like to plug your recipe for uh, for sausage and peppers. Go to Manjanero's and get the eggplant. It's very good. Yeah. Oh, Manjanero's on uh, what, 9th Avenue? 9th Avenue. Yeah. Or if you're cooking for yourself, go ahead and make onions and peppers. Do you like uh, green peppers? or? Peppers are nice. I like green peppers, yeah. I mean, if you're choosing a color for this. I fried up some shishito peppers the other day. Those are very good with some sea salt. Mm. Yeah, very good. Nice. Fresh um, mozzarella, roasted peppers. That's a fucking sandwich. Sure is. That's a sit down. <laughs> Wait, fresh mozzarella roasted peppers? Yeah. That's it? The sit down is about eating? Sun dried tomatoes? Or is, is it, it about melted? killing somebody? Sorry. Yes. Right. Sun dried tomatoes? Hey, is the sit down a, a thing about killing people or eating? It's like a meeting to like resolve it's conflicts. It's a meeting. Yeah. Okay. Usually mm-hmm. in an Italian place. Yeah. Can you imagine right, the guys. waiter who has to serve the people who are deciding this shit? Like they come into an Italian restaurant. There's got to be a waiter there, right? Yeah. And they order food. Like, I will start with some fried zucchini for the table. And like, oh, wait, this kid's got to go. And the guy, the, the waiter's like fucking hearing all this shit. Yeah. But like, maybe we should kill the waiter. We said a lot of shit in front of him. <laughs> yeah. I, I, wait, mean, I waited on Tommy Gambino. You did? Yeah. What was that like? Great. He was a nice guy. He tipped me $100. Oh, 
That's that's what they do. Yeah. You know, they take care. They take that's care. The of they buy your loyalty. Yeah, yeah. He had uh, he had scotch on the rocks, and then I went over to him. I said, "Do you want another scotch?" He's like, "No, I'm gonna order wine now." Nice, <laughs> classy. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for joining us, folks. Uh, that's the episode. We'll see you next time. Peace. See you later. Heaven's door.